Just a few headlines here for the first non-anamorphic tutorial. Uh, a few of you might have read that for the New Romantics pilot episode, I tweaked my context eye set. I added, first of all, I added latex mounts to all of them, getting rid of the adapter's wiggliness. And second, I added focus gears to all five lenses, the 28, 35, 50, 85, and 135. Uh, instead of buying uh, regular focus gears and switch them from lens to lens according to our needs on set, which would have taken a whole lot of time that we didn't have, or buying those tiny straps and then fitting them to each lens, I took the most direct route 3D printed focus gears for all of the lenses. As 3D printing becomes more and more popular, I thought this would be a useful tutorial to have here. I not so recently got a micro 3D printer, which is not big, but is good enough to print focus gears for most lenses, with a printing area of 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. The next step was going to Thingiverse and downloading this free project for seamless focus gears. The creator of the project recommends ABS plastic, but we only had PLA, so I'm here to assure you both cases work. Uh, to enjoy the full possibilities uh, of this file, I highly recommend downloading OpenSCAD, so you can customize your focus gears according to the size of your lens. Now that the software was kinda ready, I went back to the lenses and doing the first one was the hardest thing because I had never print, 3D printed anything in my life. So I took five days to get that one working and then I sped up to a rate of about two per day. Uh, I'm going off the subject, so back to the lenses. Using a caliper, measure the diameter of the focus ring in millimeters. Be very precise. For this Tokina 2870mm f2.8, I measured 80.45mm, so I'll add 0.15mm on the open scan file just to make sure it will fit. The file you got from the Thingiverse has three customizable parameters. The first parameter is the number of teeth. It affects how wide the gear is going to be. For a set of lenses, I like to keep the number of teeth constant so I don't have to adjust the follow focus every time I switch lenses. A thicker gear is also much more resistant than a thin one if you twist them around. The second parameter is the diameter of the hole where the lens should pass. I prefer to make this one a tight fit so I can send it down if it's too tight. The third parameter is the height of the lens gear. Some lenses have a lot of travel when focusing, like the Escoramas or the Rectilux, the focus module. So you need a focus gear that will travel with the focus ring, but it's big enough not to like, fall off the follow focus. So make it thicker to ensure your follow focus won't slip off during operation. You can also get this measurement with a caliper. Now that all the numbers are in, run the script pressing F5 and create the model by pressing F6. Then you can export the STL file for print. Every 3D printer's got their own software, but they're pretty much the same thing. So just load up the model, and the important part is to set the right resolution. Uh, as this is a precision part, I had good results with 150 micrometers, and set it to fill the holes, otherwise you'll end up with a gear ring that is hollow inside. Did I mention that 3D printing takes forever? A focus gear takes an average of 6 hours to print, so be patient. After this is done, get rid of any imperfections by sending them away. I always used a coarse 80 grit sandpaper, but you can use a thinner one if you want a finer feel. Usually the gear doesn't fit the lens right off the bat, so it's a repetitive process of trying to fit, sending some of it away, trying to fit again. Fitting it is a constant challenge of sliding a few millimeters on one side, then another few on the other side until it fits and wiggling and patience are your best tools. You will have sore hands after doing this for a little while, so I'm telling you now. And also, lenses that have a rubber ring for focus fit better than lenses that have a metal, a full metal construction, because the rubber helps 
with grip for the focus gear. After this, you're pretty much done. Just put the lens on the camera and get your full focus running. I hope you got some good things out of this tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope it's useful. And I'd be more than glad to check out the results you can get from your own focus gears. Be patient all throughout. It's a slow process, but when you compare the costs with the results, it's definitely worth your while. This is a different tutorial since it's not directly related to anamorphic, but you can and you should make focus gears for all of your scopes. And if you want to get addicted to anamorphic shooting, be sure to subscribe and check the previous videos. Also, you can check my blog for a written version of this tutorial and all the anamorphic stuff I've been talking about all the time. So that's it for this week, and I'll see you soon. Chit out.